Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this is the GPD Win 2 gaming handheld PC prototype. Uh, you can check out some other videos for more details on this demo unit that was sent to me by GPD for purposes of review. But I wanted to show you uh, sort of one of the more interesting things about this device, which is the keyboard. It is a handheld computer with a six inch display, and that means that there's not really room for a full size keyboard. And instead what you have here is this smaller keyboard that's meant for sort of thumb or uh, finger typing but it's not necessarily gonna be as good as using a full-size keyboard. That said, it's got the buttons that you would need for gaming, so if you don't wanna use the uh, the game control buttons up here, you can use WASD or the arrow keys, for instance, here. They're marked yellow, and uh, the WAS and D are all sort of have little raised bumps that make them a little bit easier to feel with your fingers. So you can use them for sort of moving and controlling uh, gameplay. There's also an L3 select start and Xbox button here in the corner. And overall, the keys are set up in such a way that um, uh, you feel the separation between them. They're all a little bit wider than on the uh, first generation GPD win. And the power button is here in the center instead of off to the side. And it's recessed compared with the rest of the keys. So that's kind of hard to accidentally press and it's easy to, uh, to find when you're looking for it. An interesting choice here is that all of the function keys are along the left side. So we've got F1, F2, F3, et cetera. But then if you hold the function button and press them again, you've got F7, F8, F9, F10, and so forth. Um, insert print screen, backspace, delete, enter. Um, it's not the easiest keyboard to touch type on, but it is something that you can get used to. And so what I wanted to do in this video is show you a little bit of the typing experience by doing a typing test. Um, I was thinking about actually writing a blog post or two just using this for lilliputing.com, but it's a little too painfully slow if you ask me, but uh, this will give you an idea of the speeds that you can achieve when entering small amounts of text. Um, so there's two things that I'm going to do. I'm going to actually run through this twice. The first time I'm going to use my thumbs. And let me see if I can position this so that we can see. Okay. All right, so we got about 21 words per minute, which is pretty close to what I got last time I tried using my thumbs. And you notice that there was a little bit of accuracy difficulty. Um, I didn't go back to correct any words using the uh, the 10fastfingers.com typing test online here, um, but that basically gives you an idea of what thumb typing, typing is like. I find I can do a little bit better if I put it down flat on a table and type. So let's go ahead and redo the test, and this time using as many fingers as I can fit. All right, so 28 words per minute. Uh, that said, you do have to press relatively hard. It's not quite as 
uh, simple emotion. It's not quite as light emotion, and you do kind of have to look at the keyboard. I think I got better accuracy this time around. Uh, I definitely got better speed with it flat on a table. This is not something that you're necessarily always going to be able to do, because really kind of the appeal of this sort of device is that you can pick it up and play games like this, and then if you're, say, entering a URL or typing out an email, you're probably going to be holding it instead of putting it down on a flat surface. But if you do have a tabletop or a desk or something that you can put it flat on, I find that you can type a little bit more fast, uh, a little bit more quickly, a little bit more accurately. Um, generally speaking, it's not something I want to do a lot of typing on because my hands actually start to hurt a little bit after a while. I'm just sort of pressing down hard. But for small things, entering uh, usernames, passwords, URLs for websites, and, and so forth, it's, uh, it's definitely usable. And the more you sort of get used to it, you can sort of approach touch typing. I wouldn't say it's quite the same as knowing exactly where all of your fingers are here, because it's a little hard to feel the separation. There are little sort of uh, bumps up here on the F and J keys so that you can position yourself, but then sort of learning where the spacing is between the keys is tricky. But I do find, again, that when it's flat on the table, it's a little bit easier for me to look up at the screen and see what I'm typing, which helps reduce typos. Um, so that is a quick look at the keyboard. Uh, somebody did ask me if it's backlit. It is not backlit. Uh, I think that would be difficult to do. There's not even really much space between the keys here. And I think if we, uh, if we took this off and looked underneath, you would see that these individual keys are just sort of pressing down on, uh, on little buttons underneath there. There's not a lot of uh, separation where a light would be able to shine through or do anything along those lines. But um, in terms of tiny sort of handheld keyboard uh, functionality, it's, uh, it's better than the GPD Win first generation, I'll say that. Um, so is this a laptop? Is this something that you would want to take and type documents on? No. But for a gaming PC that also has a usable keyboard, it's not so bad. And if you know exactly where the keys that you need are for playing a game, like say the arrow keys, then I think you could probably use those uh, in a game in situations where you might not want to use the touch screen or the, uh, the gaming buttons. So this is Brad Linder with Lilliputin and a, <laughs> and a uh, quick look at the um, the keyboard on the GPD Win 2. Sorry for the little bump of the camera there. You can find more details about the GPD Win 2 at lilliputing.com um, or check out my YouTube channel for more videos showing gameplay, general purpose computing, and uh, other details, including what it looks like when you open up the case and uh, replace the SSD or just take a look underneath to see where the fan that tends to generate so much noise is. For what we were just doing now, you probably didn't hear a lot of noise. The fan wasn't really kicking in for just typing on a web page. It's really when you're playing games and doing other things that are a little bit more resource intensive that the fan kicks into high gear. Uh, if you heard some background noise in this video, it's raining outside and uh, the camera is relatively close to a window. So that's probably what you're hearing. I didn't really hear much fan noise while shooting this particular video. Anyways, again, Brad Linder, Lilliputing, and the GPD Win 2 gaming handheld PC and its tiny, tiny keyboard.